Okay, I'm going to start up the container for this video. It's defined here. Uh, we can see it's basically the same as where the last video left off, where System Workbench was installed. The only difference is this uh, volume map here, this port to CMake directory, is where the new CMake project will live. Let's uh, start this container up. Let's shell into it and start up the system workbench. Alright, system workbench is open. Now I'm, I'm going to load this project. I'll just navigate to it. So root, downloads, cube, projects, 769 discovery, demos, STM win, system workbench, let Eclipse find them from here. I'm gonna pick this one. And we have the project. So now the project is open and I'm going to explain some tricky and confusing things about this project which make it more difficult to do this porting job and hopefully should explain why I'm doing the exporting. Okay, linked resources. So one of the first things I do with the new project is I find main.c. I see it's here, then when I go to open it I see that it's not there. That's fine. I happen to know that this is where it is. Now what main.c is, is a linked resource where Eclipse thinks it's here and this is where it actually is. Main.h, however, is not a linked resource. It is on disk. At its actual path. What this means is, is the build system now has to maintain two separate lists of where the source files are and the header files are. They are in totally different places. Uh, this makes it hard to add a new file. So under this core, what if I want to add a new file here? I can add a new file, but then where do I put the header file? Um, I'll probably have to uh, manually resolve uh, the, these links to find out where I should put the header file. So linked resources cause a lot of problems, at least in this project. For example, let's take a look at the board support package for audio. This file is important because later I'll be working mainly with audio. So, let me just show you. If I search for this file, we'll see that there's two of them with the same name. One of them happens to be in this project that we're looking at. Uh, so I would assume that the this is the one that's used because it's more specific. However, this more uh, general path exactly matches the path of this linked resource. Which one actually is it? turns out to be the, uh, the the more specific one in the project. Are they the same? We do a diff? No, they are not the same. They are quite different. So which file am I editing? I don't know. Um, also want to, at this point, point out the uh, spelling error here. The F is omitted. It's uh, hard to see that. Also, just want to point out quickly a little pet peeve. Uh, this audio file is not a configuration file, despite being in the config directory. Uh, free RTOS config is a config. 
I'm not familiar with all these other ones, but yeah, like conf sounds like config. But this is definitely not configuration. I don't know why they put it in there. Just a few more words about spelling. So I don't actually have a problem with spe spelling errors, but what's really bad is when the spelling errors are inconsistent. Uh, for example, let's look at GUI audio recoder audio recorder. The linked resource path is spelled wrong, uh, but the path on disk is spelled correctly. Um, they look like they're the same uh, at the end, um, so you might think that you can uh, use these uh, sort of suffixes uh, interchangeably, but you can't because they're not spelled the same, even though they look the same. Other examples include modules audio. Um, this this should say this directory should say audio player, uh, but it just says audio. Um, video player, lowercase here. So the last issue I'll discuss regarding linked resources has to do with these resource files. So take a look here, audio player win. Uh, this has to do with the uh, window manager slash GUI framework uh, for the uh, audio player app. It includes this uh, resource.c, which is not advisable to include C files, uh, especially when they're 8,000 lines long. Um, but anyway, where is this file? It's uh, not a linked resource. Uh, like the header files, uh, these are still on disk in the project. Uh, let's let's uh, let's find it. So these resource files are in GUI slash core. Yeah. So on the file system, the resource files are right next to the window files. Uh, which means that the compiler will be able to find them um, because the uh, current directory uh, or the directory where the source file is is uh, by default a include path. The problem is it's not a linked resource so uh, it's not there. Uh, this, this is mostly a problem to do with uh, the porting part but this was definitely a gotcha for me. Okay, so the reason I explained all that before is because there are two strategies for porting this project. One is we can export the system workbench project which will resolve all the linked resources to real files. So in other words, we'll get an actual directory tree with those source files actually in the tree. The other option is to not export the project and ignore the uh, linked resource paths and just use the actual file system paths. I've actually done this port using both ways and they both have issues. Uh, I haven't found a super easy way to do it, but it's not too bad anyway. Anyway, for this video I'm going to export the project mainly because I like being able to use objects.list. So what's objects.list? Uh, see here, um, in this directory, uh, this is the build directory uh, for the project, so if I were to build this project by clicking this button, this is where all the build stuff would go. So let's look at the make file. And we see here in the linker invocation that the objects being built are from objects.list. 
which is a file here, and we see it contains all of the object files that get linked in. Now this is nice because it has all of the object files and no more. Uh, this is a long list of 163, and as I was saying before, there are ambiguous files uh, of the same name, two files of the same name. Um, so when doing, when you export the system workbench project, there's a one-to-one -one mapping from the linked resource to uh, one of the one of the objects in this list. Uh, so it maps nicely, and that allows me to treat this objects.list as a single unit. Um, also note that. I will be, I'll have to change the .o extension to .c because I'm specifying source files and not, uh, in CMake I'll be specifying source files and not object files. Okay, last note for this section. If I wanted to go with the not exporting strategy, I would probably do this. Um, and I haven't tried it, this is not how I did it. Uh, when I went with the don't export route, but this looks pretty promising, so I'll mention it. Um, if you look at the make file, it's showing all of the uh, subdir dot makes. Uh, so w what I would do is I would go into every one of those, and for each one of those, I would take out the C sources here. Uh, this is sort of a delinking of the linked resources, if you will. Um, the, this is where the actual source files live. So I believe if you grabbed these out of each one of the subdir.makes, that would give you 163 object files. But again, that's not what I'm going to do. I'm going to export the project, so let's get to it. Okay, so I will now export the project. So here's the project in System Workbench. I'm going to do File, Export, File System. Give it a name, Exported System Workbench Project. Now here is the important checkbox. Resolve and export linked resources. Oh, let's uh, make sure we got everything. Okay. All right, what did we get? So, as expected, we get a bunch of C files. That's good. We got the startup code also. Uh, we can see the, the sources are uh, following the tree structure of the linked resources. Um, it also gave us the linker script. That's nice. So now I'm just about ready to do some CMake stuff. So I'm going to create the new project directory. Then I'm going to copy all the sources that were exported. Actually, let's go in first. Application, drivers, middlewares goes to. And look at that, 160 files. That is nice. So I have the source files here ready to be built in the new project. And now I just want to go over some information about what I'm going to pull in from the old project. Just want to go over it now so I don't have to go over it while I'm doing stuff. So the linker script, actually I forgot to pull that in from the exported uh, project. 
That's the uh, .ld going into new CMake project. Okay, so compiler flags. I'm getting that from the make file. Okay, make file has uh, linker flags. The compiler flags will be in here. I'm assuming that uh, every compiler invocation is the same uh, regarding flags. Um, actually, it's not the same with include directories, but I'm hoping it is with flags. Uh, static libraries, uh, that's from the top make file. Uh, we have the search paths and oh, libraries are in libs. Um, where is libs? Objects.make. Okay, we have three static libraries here. Um, Objects.list, as, as I showed before, uh, going to work with that. And then finally, I just want to say again the issue with the resources.c uh, files. Uh, these were not exported, as I was mentioning before. Um, oh, I guess we have these, but those aren't what I was talking about before. Uh, these aren't here, so at some point I will have to go into the uh, cube firmware package and copy those over.